Hi, Tim Wilhelm here from Kankakee Community College. Today's presentation is on basic math. Simple unit conversions using both estimation and accurate dimensional analysis suitable for solar technicians. Uh, keep in mind that both solar thermal and solar photovoltaic technology are international in scope and maybe unfortunately for us here in the U.S., much of the hardware that's used is manufactured overseas. They use the metric system. Over here, we use imperial units. There's a lot of confusion among entry-level or trainee-level solar technicians. Oh my gosh, what in the world? How do I relate centigrade to Fahrenheit? How do I relate meters to feet? How do I relate this to that? So we're going to learn today how to do that this is not for people who have already been through linear algebra and differential equations and integral calculus. This is for your basic technical math students. Let's start with doing unit conversions via estimation and solving problems via estimation. Uh, the SRCC, the Solar Rating and Certification Corporation, tests and certifies solar thermal collectors both solar air heaters and solar domestic hot water heaters. Uh, here is a sheet from the SRCC about a specific glazed flat plate solar collector. And this specific one has a stated volume fluid capacity within the collector of 1.7 liters. Now let's imagine that with this 1.7 liter water volume capacity in each collector, we're putting up a six collector array on a roof. We want to know for some reason what the weight of that water is in all six collectors combined. Now for us it's going to be a little tricky to understand the weight unless we get everything converted to imperial units. So we want to know how many pounds of water are there. We need a conversion factor. Here's an easy one for estimating. A pint, a pound, the world around. One pint of water weighs just about one pound, approximately, for estimating purposes. Here's another approximation. A liter is just a little bit more than a quart. A liter in the metric system is a little bit more than a quart in the imperial system. So we've got 1.7 liters. We've got six collectors. Six times 1.7, if you rough that out in your head, comes out just about to 10. 10 liters. So 10 liters is a little bit more than 10 quarts. We also have another conversion factor we should already have in our brain from when we were a kid. A quart is two pints. So that means if we have 10 quarts, we have 20 pints. And since a pint's a pound the world around, the water volume combined in those six collectors is going to weigh a little bit more than 20 pounds. That's an easy way to estimate. Here's another approximation that we can use for conversion, and that is a meter in the metric system is just a little bit longer than one yard in the imperial system. And we know, again, from elementary school, another estimating conversion factor, that one yard is three feet. In the world of solar photovoltaic technology, we define peak sun as 1,000 watts per meter squared. A lot of people in this country, what does that mean, a thousand watts per meter squared? They want it in square feet. So how could we approximate, rough it out in our head, how many watts per square foot that is? Think about this. A thousand watts per meter squared is one meter by one meter. That's just a little bit bigger than one yard by one yard. So that's three feet by three feet, or actually a little bit more than three feet by a little bit more than three feet. So if I take three plus a little bit times three plus a little bit, I'm going to be real close to 10 square feet. That means I've got approximately a thousand watts for every 10 square feet. How much per square foot? Divide by 10. That means I have approximately 100 watts per square foot is an approximation of peak sun guesstimated, approximated in the imperial system. 